My relationship to music is not a casual one, and I think this opportunity to share my voice, I just want to make sure that it's of value, because it's a, it's a very sacred thing that we're able to do. That's Julia Bullock. She's a soprano, or a classical singer, as she describes herself, who's in demand as a performer, a curator, and a speaker, focusing on equity, inclusion, and restorative justice in the arts. She'll be performing this week at Norfolk's Historic Attics Theater. Presenting a new work by Jesse Montgomery, co-commissioned by the Virginia Arts Festival, called Five Freedom Songs. Julia spoke with me recently over Zoom from her home in Germany about the origins of this piece, how it feels to sing it, and how experiences over the past few years have shifted her artistic practice. We go walking out at night. So I understand you and the composer, Jesse Montgomery, kind of conceived the Five Freedom Songs together. Could you tell us a little bit about how that project came about and what your process has been working on it together? Absolutely. So Jesse came to me. Um, she wanted to put together a project that was featuring her music in New York City. And she said, I'm considering setting these various songs that were from this anthology that was released just after the Civil War. And in it are featured 136 melodies and lyrics that were developed by people who were enslaved across the United States. So yeah, she and I just sat and met for coffee and <laughs> talked a little bit through some options. And I said, you know, I'm just going to order the book and go through all these songs myself and then kind of give you my shortlist. And so from that, she set three of those songs. And then when I was asked by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, a couple of years later, for project ideas, I thought, you know, this would be a really interesting project to continue developing and expanding. So I asked Jessie if she would also be willing to set a few more of those songs. And uh, now we're at these wonderful five freedom songs that can either be done as they will be in this concert as a standalone concerto with string orchestra and percussion, or they can be a part of a larger project that I've put together called History's Persistent Voice. How did you choose the songs from that anthology that mm -hmm. spoke to you the most? Yeah, so I, I just started at number one and went <laughs> went through each one. And I was looking for material that had a sort of timelessness to it and also had a kind of universal quality. So not just speaking to the elements of grief and violence and loss and degradation, but also was there something aspirational about the songs? Was there something about these particular songs that was not just being drawn down or weighted down by the present moment, but aspiring to some some place, some space beyond it? And, you know, when we think about spirituals, at least in the Black American tradition, I guess what moves me so much about them is that it's not that they're speaking from this religious doctrine. In fact, many of them are, are songs of rebellion and uh, a real kind of consciousness and desire or even a fighting sort of quality to liberate oneself and liberate one's people, even if the only liberation that you can find is within your own mind or within your own imagination. But it's not just accepting life or, or reality as it, as it exists especially if that reality is something that's intolerable. I am a poor pilgrim of sorrow I'm tossed in this wild world alone No hope have I for How would you describe the musical language that Jesse Montgomery uses for setting these songs? The musical language of Jesse's is 
magical. That is in one <laughs> word. <laughs> um, and I say magical because I feel really free while singing it. And mm. there's also an invitation from Jesse to improvise a little bit. You know, Je- Jesse and I worked on the text itself, although we did certainly base most of the text on uh, the original transcriptions. Um, there were a few lyrics that we decided to change or even just shifting around of the order of some of the lyrics so that, that there was a progression to the songs that had thrust and again was not like cycling around the same subject matter over and over again. I think with Jessie's material, she finds even within a string orchestra, there's a great diversity of sound that she has composed in this 20, 25 minute set of songs. And it's an absolute joy and also a very deep experience to, to sing them. We also talked about how the experiences of going through the pandemic and recently becoming a new parent have affected the way she approaches her work. Maybe I've become less tolerant of my time being wasted. <laughs> I think that's, that's one thing that certainly has changed. Um, and also when I'm on stage with people, I just want to make sure that we are all, you know, in a, a shared space. Every moment we have is so precious when we are choosing to be together, offering something as an intentional group. So I want to make sure that not only the performance is something that is enjoyable, but the process of getting to a, a place of performance is is really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It sounds like really wanting to be in integrity in your work in all kinds of different levels. Yeah, yeah. Again, that was never not a part of the equation. It's just sure. It's something I'm definitely. I guess I'm demanding. I will just use the word. I am demanding that that is that is mm-hmm. the, the reality of the spaces now. I think I've been able to focus actually way way more quickly than I ever thought I could. And you know, I, I used to just spend a lot of time, I guess, obsessing over how is something going to go, how is it going to land. Um, it's not, I can't even say that my priorities have shifted. I, I think it's just helped me hesitate less, which is a great feeling. <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm. Is there anything else that you would want to share with our listeners about the five freedom songs or the performance coming up? These pieces are really about black liberation at its core. And, you know, we're asking people to listen to a human experience. And even if it is wrought with tension and pain, there's always some moment where we are asking each other to just be conscious and aware of each other's experiences. And I hope that over the course of the piece, that there is a genuine entry point each person in the audience can pass through and connect with. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your thoughts. And I will look forward to hearing the performance. I can't wait to be there. (laughs) I want you to stand up tall and proud. Julia Bullock performs Jesse Montgomery's Five Freedom Songs this Wednesday, June 14th at the Attics Theater in Norfolk. She'll be joined by the Virginia Symphony, led by music director Eric Jacobson. And the program also includes music by Anthony Dvorak and George Walker. You can find tickets and details at vafest.org. For WHRO-FM, I'm Wayla Shambaugh. I want you to live by the justice code And I want you to walk down free